It's the No Sleep Podcast. No Sleep. Featuring stories from Reddit.com's No Sleep Forum. No Sleep. Join us as the sleepless hours tick past. Our first tale is entitled Cologne, written by Ali Brosh and read by Faith Sayers. First, I was annoyed by the shitty dollar store knockoff fragrance that lingered in my entryway. I never worn perfumes, especially not cheap cologne. I hate the stuff. It smells like desperation and it irritates my skin. As those two thoughts slowly juxtaposed themselves, my annoyance turned to sickening apprehension. I often fear that my house will be broken into. Fear stems from an experience I had as a child where I awoke to find a man in a cowboy hat and a trench coat staring at me from across the room. He carried a bowie knife and a plastic garbage bag. My parents read it off as a night terror, but it continued to haunt me well into my adult life. So, I check everything. Doors, windows, crawl space. It's so routine that it's almost automated. I even do it in a particular order to make sure I don't miss anything. I mean, you don't want to spend your final seconds wishing that you would remember to check the locks on your bedroom window. I locked the front door behind me and quickly made the rounds. Doors, windows, crawl space. Everything seemed secure, but I decided to do it again just in case. I must have pulled a little harder on my back door the second time around, because it jerked open even though it was locked. The lock hadn't latched properly. I tried not to panic. I grabbed butcher knife and got started on my second level of safety checks. Closets, showers, pantry, intake vent, cupboards, crawl space, behind curtains, under bed. However, my portable CD player was missing and my computer was on. I was embarrassed to report such a small theft, but I reasoned that if the police poked around and didn't find anything, I could feel safe and actually get some sleep. The responding officer did a thorough job of reassuring me, but I still pushed my dresser in front of my bedroom door before going to sleep, just in case. Unsurprisingly, sleeping was difficult. That awful cologne seemed almost stronger than it had when I first walked into the house, and its cloying sweetness was starting to give me a headache. I'd probably have to air out the whole place in the morning. I finally fell asleep around 2 a.m. with my face nestled into the neck of my shirt. A burst of static woke me up several hours later, gasping and clamming, my shirt still covering my face. The static faded into those little clicks and pops that sometimes precede live recordings. It sounded obscured somehow, or far away, muffled. Then a man's voice. I've ever done one like this. They're usually much more obvious. They know what's going to happen as soon as they walk in the door. But I'm excited for this one. Consciousness came on slowly. I opened my eyes and looked around the room. A little orange light blinked near the corner of my ceiling. I've been watching you for months. You're always so good. So careful. It was my CD player. Someone had hidden it in the ceiling vent. I never checked the ceiling vent because it was far too small to conceal anything threatening. The whole thing was probably a practical joke. One of my asshole friends exploiting my paranoia. There's no way that a person could fit inside my ceiling vent. They had broken in, recorded a creepy CD on my computer, and then set the alarm on my CD player to go off in the middle of the night. I didn't know whether to feel angry or relieved. I listened closely, trying to pick out whose voice it was. It's exciting to think that you might find me before I can do it. I... I didn't recognize the speaker. But probably won't. I spent all day making sure I closed it up properly after I got inside. The last shred of my relief drained away as the bed slowly shifted underneath me. 
No ever thinks to check inside the mattress.